starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Something new has been added to the Nelson backyard. Yes, sir, it's a regulation basketball hoop, and it's been attached securely to our garage. There's a rather interesting story about this. I think I'd better start a couple of days ago and bring you gradually up to date. You see, once each year, we have an interesting little affair at the school auditorium. It's called Father's Night, and the fathers have to put on the entertainment all by themselves. Well, as usual, Ozzy was trying to figure out rather unsuccessfully something he could do. It's been years since he played his saxophone, so of course that was out. I suggested he make shadow pictures on the wall, but that seemed to be too mild. Especially since our next-door neighbor, Thorny, was practicing a tap dance to 16 special choruses of Casey Jones. All right, take the egg here. The hand is quicker than the eye. Throw the towel over the egg. Now, feel the egg is still there, right? Right. Okay, now I say the magic words. Alakazoo, Alakazam. One, two, three, four. Hey, Pop. <laughs> oh, now, Ricky, why'd you have to come stomping in like that just in the middle of the trick? What's wrong? Well, I was just showing this trick to your mother. Gone, I don't know what happened. You dropped the egg and it broke. Yes, yes. <laughs> Supposed to show if the hand is quicker than the eye. I guess the egg was quicker than the hand. Yeah. Well, I haven't done the trick in quite a while. Take a little brushing up. You'll need a mop for that one. Here you are, dear. Start mopping. Okay. Oh, Mom's got you working, huh, Pop? Oh, yeah. Hello there, Hi, stranger. Mom. Is this a little late for you to be getting home from basketball practice, Dave? I just stay a little later, Pop. I was shooting some baskets. Dave's getting a little worried there. What do you mean? Well, Thornberry looks pretty sharp, boy. What's Will got to do with it? He and I are trying off the same position. Well, that sounds fine. A little competition is a very healthy thing. Makes you work harder. Well, that reminds me, David. How did you make out with that composition you did for English today? Oh, yeah. If I have to go some to beat out old Will. <laughs> oh, hi, Mom. Can I help you with dinner? How'd you make out with the composition? Well, let's talk about it after dinner, huh, Mom? Oh, no. <laughs> I take it you didn't exactly get an A? No, ma'am. A B? No, sir. Why don't you start from the other end of the alphabet? <laughs> now, wait a minute, David. Don't tell me you flunked English. But just in one composition, Pa. Oh, David, that's ridiculous. It sure is, boy. Quiet, muttonhead. Muttonhead? <laughs> well, I mean, after all, David, you're supposed to get straight A's in English. It's a language you speak every day. See, David? From now on, you better watch your language. <laughs> Ricky, will you please stay out of this? Well, David, I think you'd better give up sports for a while and concentrate on your schoolwork. Oh, golly, Mom. It just is one composition. Well, I know, David, I think your mother's right. I think from now on, you better just come straight home from school and get at those books. Oh, golly, Pa. Well, I know, but you don't want to flunk the most important course in school. After you make up the work, then you can go out for basketball again. Just tell the coach you'll be back in a few days. Well, heck, you kick me off the squad. I won't even make the team. Well, David, look, basketball is fine, but your schoolwork is more important. I guess you're right, Mom. I think you boys better wash up for dinner now. Casey Jones, Mom, the Duke of Ronald. Casey Jones, a lot of dee-dee-dee-dee-dee-dee. Hey, Oz. Hey, Oz, over here. Oh, oh, hi, Thorny. Hey, for a minute there, I thought you didn't recognize me. Oh, for a minute there, I thought I might get away with it. <laughs> Wednesday night. Oh, good for you. Yeah, got a couple new choruses. Want to hear them? Well, okay, if you insist. Casey Jones, Mom. <laughs> thorny, Thorny, please. What's the matter? Don't you want to hear me sing? Well, uh, you see, if I hear the new choruses now, yes, yeah, that's a good one, well, then I'll lose the thrill of hearing them on uh, Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, I'll sing one of the old ones. Casey Jones, uh, Thorny, Mom. Uh, thorny. Oh, now, look, you just don't want to hear me sing. Now, go ahead and say it. Well, I, I... Don't you dare. You're just jealous, that's all. Jealous of what? Well, you're just jealous. <laughs> Tell me, Oz, what does it feel like to have no talent? By golly, Thorny, you ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oz, I shouldn't be kidding you this way. You probably feel bad enough about David. What do you mean about David? Well, my boy Will told me. David told him all about it in school today. 
told them all about what? Oh, Oz, now don't be coy with me. David quit the basketball team. We'll beat him out for the position. Well, you know, just a second. David quit the basketball team, yes, but Will had nothing to do with it. He quit because of me. <laughs> Why, Oz, I didn't even know you were trying out. I don't know what I'm talking about. David's marks were a little shaky, so Harriet and I decided it'd be a good thing for him to give up basketball until he brought his marks back up. Well, I can't say I blame you for making excuses for the boy. This is no excuse. This is the absolute truth, Arnie. I kind of figured Will would get it. He sort of takes after his old man. You know, I hate to admit this, but I was quite a basketballer in my day, too. You, Arnie? Well, sure. Why do you think they called me Bucket Stormberry? Because of your shape. Oh, that's very unkind. Well, as long as you brought the subject up, minus, you know, I was a pretty fair basketball player myself in school. You? Yes, me. Tell me this much, Basket. Buckets. Uh, uh, Buckets? <laughs> What's the greatest number of points you ever scored in one game? Twenty-two. Twenty-five for me. Ozzy? Yeah, it's me. David! Where have you been? Downtown, Blanca. Where's David? He's upstairs doing his homework. Oh. Where'd he go there? Where do you see this? Did you call me, Pop? I did, son. Take a look at this. Oh, boy, a basketball! Yes, sir. He is not a beauty. Now, hold it up, little son. You're blocking your mother's face. Now, no, that the regulation hoop, the regulation net, the whole works. Change your clothes. We're going to start work right now. You mean you want them to practice tonight? You bet I do. We'll show that old windbag Thornberry. Well, I thought you said David had to put more time in on his schoolwork. Well, he can do that a little later on. I'll help him with his studies, Harry. It's important he make the basketball team, too. Besides that, it isn't as if he were flunking the whole course. It's just one composition he got this sort of a, a low mark on. Go ahead, change your clothes, son. <laughs> Dave. Now let's try a couple of set shots from right over here. Left-handed and then right-handed. Gee, I'm awful tired, Pa. I know, Dave, but the game of basketball is like the game of life. The man who wins is a man who gives it that little extra effort. That's the difference between winning and losing. The difference between success and failure. That little extra effort. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, dear? It's getting awfully late. Don't you think David ought to be coming in now? Well... Okay. I guess maybe your mother's right, Dave. We'll get out here again tomorrow night and we'll really practice. We'll show those thornberries. <laughs> I think this is about as far as I can go, Dad. Oh, that's okay, son. Just sit down. We'll discuss this right here. Now, Dave, what seems to be your main difficulty with this schoolwork? I guess I haven't been working hard enough. Well, uh, this composition you were telling your mother and me about, just what did you select for your subject matter? Uh, the basic difference between the ascetic form of art during the Renaissance period compared with 20th century art. Oh. Well, uh, just uh, how much do you know about the aesthetic difference between the, the uh, basic uh, Renaissance uh, of the... Uh, just uh, uh, how much do you know about the subject? I guess I don't know very much about it either. Well, you see, Dave, 
the main thing in writing a composition is to know your subject matter well. And so many people get in difficulty because they try to write about subjects that they're actually not familiar with. And as a result, the, the composition shows it. It's the same thing if a man is making a speech or even uh, ordinary conversation. I think your mother will bear me out. How many times have you been in a room and somebody starts to talk about something that's immediately obvious? This man knows his subject. Everybody perks up and listens. Here's a man who has great knowledge of what he's talking about. On the other hand, every once in a while, somebody will get up and start to talk about something. And before he's preceded two or three sentences, it's obvious that here's a man who doesn't know his subject well, doesn't know what he's talking about. So what happens? The audience starts to lose attention and starts to become listless and... and uh, David? <laughs> Will you help me carry David up to bed? Hi, Mom. Bob. Oh, hi, David. How did basketball practice work out? Oh, swell. I think the coach thought so, too. Big deal. That stuff you were showing me last night was a great help. I shot five baskets. Oh, good for you, son. How did you make out in English class? Oh, I fell asleep. Well, that's too bad. I'm sure it won't happen again. <laughs> Oh, say, what did Will Thornberry say when he heard you were out for basketball again? Oh, he didn't say anything. I, I kind of figured he'd be a little bit burned up. Oh, hey, no, Will and I are good friends. Well, certainly, Will's his very best friend. Oh, yes, I mean, I want the boys to stay friends. You know I'm not one for holding grudges. Oh, what about the Thornberry's driveway? Well, what about it? Who took the chalk and wrote, Thorny is a meathead? It sure wasn't me. It wasn't me. Well, I only did it as a joke, Harriet. <laughs> I don't know. Thorny didn't seem to be laughing while he was rubbing it off. Oh, well, you know, Thorny, he just has no sense of humor. Dan, Will and I had a great idea for Wednesday night. Oh, what's that? We used to be a pretty great basketball player, didn't you? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, David. I, I played a little in high school. Mr. Thornbury was pretty good, too, wasn't he? Well, uh, so he claims. Uh, what's the idea? Well, Will and I talked to the coach about having a game between the fathers. You know, for Father's Night. A, a basketball game? Yeah, he thought it was a pretty good idea. You're going to be captain of one team, and Mr. Thornberry is going to be captain of the other. Oh, now, now, just a second, David. I mean, after all, I haven't played basketball in, in a number of years. Well, you said you wanted something to do for Wednesday night. Well, yes, but uh, I've got this egg trick all perfected. You know I've been practicing up on it. Uh, here, let me have the, uh, the towel there, Harry, would you? Will you boys get the mop? No, 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 that won't be necessary. I've been working on this. I think it should be real good. Now watch. The hand is quicker than the eye. Now you watch, this is an ordinary egg, as you just see, a regular domestic kitchen egg. Now I hold the egg thusly, and I throw the towel across the egg that way. Now I say the magic words. Alakazoo, alakazam, one, two, three, four. Hey, that's pretty good, Pop. Huh? Anybody know what happened to the egg? It's in your pocket. <laughs> Which pocket? The one with the lump in it. Well, I, I, I don't think that the lump will be so obvious when I'm standing far away from the audience. See, you fellows are pretty close to me. Oh, say, dear, listen, I meant to tell you, Joe Cunningham's father plans on doing magic for Friday night. And, you know, he used to be a professional magician. Are you sure? Yeah, he's going to make a dog disappear. <laughs> make a dog disappear? A St. Bernard. What with a big pocket he must have. <laughs> David, I, I, you sure now he's going to make a, a, a St. Bernard dog disappear? And that's what Joey said. Make that left-handed hook shot. That used to be one of my best shots. You know, I used to sort of 
Feint the defense off balance and then swing over my shoulder. You hooked it just a little bit too hard, huh? No, oh, thanks, David. Uh, no good. I, I didn't even hit the garage. Well, I think I'll call it quits for tonight and pick this up tomorrow afternoon. Uh, just one more hour, Pop. No, no, David. There's such a thing as overtraining, you know. I don't want to overdo it. Hey, that was neat, Pop. Right in the Thornberry's ash can. Oh, oh. <laughs> Is that where it went? I, I know it went somewhere in that general direction. You gonna practice some more tonight? No, I was telling David, I think I'll call it quits for now and, and practice some more tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, besides, it's getting awfully cold. What do you mean the softy's getting old? Pop, I said it's getting awfully cold. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, it is that. Oh, come on. Go in the house now, fellas. Let me have the ball. No, I didn't do so bad at that tonight, Dave. No, you did swell, huh? What's the matter? I thought I'd try just one more shot before we go in. I wish Thorny could have seen that one. <laughs> Must have been about 35 or 40 feet, huh? Yeah, that was a great shot. Oh, thanks. Aren't you coming, Pop? Uh, I think I'll stay and, and shoot a couple more baskets. <laughs> Say, uh, what time are you going over to school tonight? About 7, I guess. Yeah, we're going to be there about 7, too. Why don't you come down in our car? Well, that's right with me, but I don't think our fathers will want to ride together. No, I guess not. Say, it's going to be an exciting game tonight, huh? Yeah. I saw Pop last night, and he looks pretty sharp. My dad really looked great. He's got a trick shot called a triple whammy that's really neat. He does kind of a hop, skip, and jump. Then flips a hook shot with a lot of English on it. My pop doesn't go in for that tricky stuff. He'd rather be a good player than the fancy Dan. Oh, my pop's plenty good. Of course, your father's good, too. It's just that my father's a little taller and a little faster. Well, don't worry about pop. He's plenty fast, boy. Oh, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of speed. For a man his age. <laughs> I'll see you down there. May the best team win. May the better team win. <laughs> Mom? Oh, hello, dear. I got good news. Well, fine. What is it? The teacher let me do that composition over again, and I handed it in, and she said it was swell. Oh, well, that is good news. Did you write on the same subject? No, I didn't. I followed Pop's advice. I called it basketball and life. You know how the same rules apply? A lot of the stuff Pop told me. Where is Pop, anyway? Oh, well, he's lying down in the den. Holy smokes, anything the matter? Well, I'm afraid he's had too much basketball practice this afternoon. Oh, golly. Yeah, what's the matter? Oh, hello, boys. We're over here, Dad. Uh, uh yeah, yes, I know. Harry, could you just turn my head over so I can talk to the boys? Do you really feel sick, Pop? Well, no, I, I think it's only a temporary condition, fellas. It's just that I can't quite lift my arms and my legs. Can you sit up? Well, I can try. No, you don't. Now, you just lie there. You mean you can't play basketball tonight? No, I'm afraid not, boys. Well, now, I, I may be able to if I rest a little bit. In fact, my muscles are uh, starting to loosen up a little now. Hey, I can uh, wiggle my toes. Now, now, you know what Dr. Brown said. Carry you upstairs and put you in a hot bath. Gee, if Pop can't play tonight, I sure don't want to go to school. Me either. Uh, I'm sorry, boys. I, I don't know how this happened. I was outside practicing, shooting a few baskets. I just stopped for a moment and... Sat down on the back steps, and when I went to get up, my muscles were all tightened up. This is tight as a pretzel. How'd you get him in the house, Mom? Oh, I just kind of rolled him in like a hoop. I suppose everybody will say I chickened out. Well, that's okay, Pa. Heck, who cares what everybody says? We'll just move to another city. <laughs> I'll get it. I'm sorry this had to happen, boys. Heck, Pop, you couldn't help it. Oh, hello, Will. Hey, it's Will Thornbury. Should we throw the blanket over Pop's face so he can't see him? Mr. Nelson? Good. Hi, Will. Hi, Will. Hi. See ya. Uh, I came over to see if I could ride down to the school with you guys. Aren't you going down with your father? 
Well, I, I was, but... Well, Pop was practicing basketball behind Murphy's barn, and... and he sprained his ankle. Oh, gee, that's too bad. What, you mean he can't even play in the game tonight? No, he's got to stay in bed for at least a week, maybe two. Oh, that's a shame, Will. Well, you certainly can ride down with us. We'll be very glad to have you. Hey, Pop got up off the couch. Yeah, can you play now, Pop? Well, certainly. Are you kidding? David, this is what I mean. It's that little extra effort that makes the difference between victory and defeat. On to victory, boys. <laughs> Say, I understand you guys really gave my team a shellacking last night. Oh, well, we were pretty lucky, Thorny. Yeah, we eked out a little victory. <laughs> Tell you this much, though, I bet you if you'd have been there, it wouldn't have been quite such a victory. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. It's uh, your bad leg, isn't it? Well, uh... Uh, no, 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 it's just one here. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're pretty lucky. Oh, uh, say, tell me, boy, you were quite the star last night. Well, I, I got kind of lucky, you know. You have one of those nights where you, you sink them from all corners. The old hook shot was working pretty well, and that, that the dribble reverse shot over here uh, seemed to be... You know, every once in a while you get a night where no matter where you throw the ball, it drops in the basket. <laughs> I just got lucky, that's all. Oh, man. <laughs> say, tell me, I haven't heard yet, but uh, what was the final score? Uh, well, uh, you know, it was a, a, a very closely fought game, a, a tight game. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the final score? Uh, well, you know, uh, sometime you'll have a game and it'll be a, a scintillating game, an exciting game, and, and, and yet the score won't go up into those astronomical figures because the defense is, is, is so tight and so keen. What was the final score, Oz? Uh, oh, uh, seven to two. <laughs>